Hi, and welcome to this webinar, The Perfect Product Lifecycle. My name is Joan Bostrom, and I'm the Strategy Officer at InRiver. And with me, I have Joji Matthew, that's the PLM Solutions Manager at Technia. And he will talk about how to get this working in practice and give you a short demo of the integrated solutions. You are all in listen-only mode, but if you have any questions or want more information after the webinar, you can send our, your requests to webinar at inriver.com and we will get back to you as soon as we can. I would like to start to define PIM or define PIM according to, to InRiver before we start talking about uh, the combined solutions with PIM and PLM. Um, so what do most of the InRiver PIM customers have in common? Well, they're all working in multiple channels where they meet their customers, their resellers and partners that are, of course, all looking for product information, some in order to make purchasing decisions, some in order to actually get data so that they can publish it to their e-commerce sites or their catalogs. Um, but unfortunately, most companies are creating updating and maintaining uh, the product information in, in many different information silos. More or less actually in every customer facing system, channel or document. When the company expands its market reach either geographically or through new brands or channels, this insurmountable task with all its challenges just grows with it. The siloed systems creates compartmentalized organizations and ends up in something that we call the content spaghetti syndrome. This is mainly driven by Excel spreadsheets that go back and forth through email and driven by an email and stairway and corridor running workflow. Just think about what would happen if uh, you were to uninstall Microsoft Excel on all computers. How long would this process work? Content spaghetti drives cost, it leads to long time to market, and creates lack of consistency across channels. PIM bridges the gap between the data that is needed for transactions and logistics, um, often in the supply chain or ERP processes, and the information that is needed in the market channels. So customers rarely buy something based on item number or, or price alone or, or on pallet weight. Price is actually one of the last criteria used for making purchasing decisions. To make a purchasing decision, customers need images, movies, texts, specifications, documents. And there's much more valuable data in a PLM system than in any ERP or supply chain package. And the data in the PLM exists a lot earlier as well, which creates that opportunity to start enriching products earlier and go to market faster. Today, it's not only the images and the movies and the sales arguments and the care instructions and material compositions that we need to, to supply to our customers. 78% of the generation X and Y says it's important to know where a product was made and who made it. PLM definitely plays a growing role here as well. In InRiver, there's an entity called a product. You could also call it a style or, or the model. You wouldn't find that in most ERP or supply, pack, supply chain packages because they mainly use SKUs or, or items. Products is an aggregated view on all the variants. It carries all information and content that the variants have in common, like descriptive texts and look images, model images, movies, etc. Thus, it reduces the number of places and entities that needs to be maintained, and it also makes assortment management a lot easier, as it reduces the number of entities that needs to be managed in all the channels. One of the things that's really important today is to actually increase conversion rates and increase average order value. And to do that, we use upsell and cross-sell. We create looks, kits, and sets. Uh, we want to sell accessories and spare parts with our products. And to do this in a really efficient and simple way uh, is crucial to, in order to, to be really successful. And this is where, what InRiver is all about, to, to create that compelling uh, product story uh, that can be sent to all channels to actually convert customers and increase the average order value. 
To create a slim and efficient process, we have divided it into four steps. It starts with supply, goes on to enrich, goes to plan and release, and finally to publish. In the supply stage, the ERP or PLM system creates SKUs, variants, and products in InRiver. InRiver will then apply the correct model and enrich it with all the information that's needed in order to market and sell it in all the channels, while it constantly measures how complete it is. It will do so by creating tasks in a task-based workflow and, and sending tasks and to all the different roles working within InRiver. If necessary, a translation stage can be added, and during the whole process, InRiver will monitor the completeness of each product until it is deemed channel ready and is published in the publish stage to all the channels. Without a PIM, when you're working in Excel Hell, most tasks are being managed in a serial manner where each role often waits for another role to finish their task before they can get to work. That means they're often waiting for an Excel spreadsheet to be sent to them, which they can then enrich a bit and send to the next role within the organization. To be efficient and avoid unnecessary wait states and the frustration that comes with it, InRiver is designed to lend itself to support parallel task-based workflows. And this leads to much faster time to market and less frustration. So on to today's subject, PIM and PLM as complementary solutions to create that perfect uh, product life cycle. I'd like to start off with a quote from um, Tech Clarity in a report that's called The Complementary Roles of PIM and PLM. Uh, because it says that PIM is quickly becoming mandatory uh, because it's optimizing the selling processes and the relationships with customers and consumers. Uh, I think this is mainly due to the fact that time to market is too long. And uh, where PIM and PLM really shines is when it comes to shorten the time to market. The design pur purchasing and production is often very efficient today. So goods are being delivered on time and quite quickly. A lot of customers tell us that the product marketing, the enrichment of the promotions and the publishing process is much less efficient. So that means that market launch is delayed due to the fact that they don't have the correct product information ready for all the market channels, for all the resellers, for all the e-commerce initiatives, etc. So if we can cut this down and shorten time to market and go to market launch earlier, we can be much more flexible. We can increase our sales and of course, we can go from being reactive to being proactive. To define the differences between PIM and PLM, to start off, PLM is of course used to design and purchase products, uh, to manage product requirements and optimize the, the assortments or the collections, to manage the development projects and control the changes, to support collaboration, to manage the purchasing and product compliance. Whilst PIM is more about the marketing aspect, uh, to collect and to consolidate, but mostly to enrich and to categorize it. Translate, of course, is, is important and in many cases add market-specific information. Uh, plan, of course, plan the assortments and publish them to all the different channels like e-commerce, print, in-store, e-marketplaces, etc., and last but not least, to distribute this to resellers and partners in the value chain so that they can be as efficient in their marketing process as you are. Uh, because if we can help the resellers to increase the conversion rate and increase average order value, we both gain from that. To look at InRiver from a top-down view could look like this. Uh, at the bottom, we start with the supply phase where PLM and ERP creates product styles and variants in, in InRiver. InRiver will then take a look at that and apply a model and see what it's got and what it needs in order to publish in the channels. And it will start an enrichment phase where it will dispatch tasks to different roles within or outside of the organization. They will start add this information and then we can start plan and release this to the channels. So in the plan and release phase, we can create assortments, collections, and then manually or automatically uh, 
send them to the different channels. InRiver will, of course, take care of, of uh, arranging for images to have the correct uh, file format, correct uh, geometry, and, and correct compression levels for each and every channel. But it will also send the correct number of attributes and languages to each and every channel that needs information. Whether or not it's your own e-commerce initiative, it's uh, a marketplace or, or a printed catalog or an, an iPad app. If we look at this from a process perspective and, and look at what you do in the different systems, typically you will find engineers and designers working in the PLM system, uh, working with R&D design and purchasing and producing, uh, but also monitoring quality and purchasing information, CSR related information, maybe even the production. Uh, whilst in the PIM, you'll primarily find the marketing and sales resources, uh, working with enrichment and, and publishing the information, creating everything from product descriptions to, to campaigns and other market activities, working with market launch activities, translations of sales arguments, adding media assets, creating looks and kits, uh, adding upsells and cross-sells before it's published to the different channels. When we streamline the process using PIM and PLM in a combination, we gain a lot of business value. Uh, first and foremost, we save a lot of time. So when we transfer the PLM data from to PIM automatically, we prevent all the non-value adding copy and paste activities and, and we get rid of all those pesky spreadsheets that are floating around in the organization. Uh, we can reuse and repurpose the PLM information in all channels. And of course, uh, we can make all the updates instantly available for sales and marketing while they're working on enrichment and, and publishing uh, of the products to all the channels. We can start earlier with sales and marketing preparation so we can be ready with the next collection or assortment earlier. We can open up possibilities for flexibility and late adjustments, and we can prepare marketing campaigns, catalogs, and sales books a lot earlier. This means also that we publish to any channel while increasing the quality and gaining consistency across channels as we're working with that one single source of truth. We can ensure that sales and marketing is working with the latest developed styles and products and of course communicate the changes automatically in a smooth manner. This all increases efficiency, cuts cost and above all cuts time to market. Today, we have been focusing a lot on apparel and fashion. Uh, we'll continue to do that uh, with a short overview on how InRiver version 6 looks like and works. Uh, bear in mind that this is fashion apparel, but you can definitely apply this on any type of product category, whether it's being electronics or, or heavy machinery. Uh, it's just that we can only have one example uh, at a time, and uh, today we have chosen to, to use apparel as, as uh, the, uh, the main demo example. Um, this is in River PIM portal, the start page. And as you can see, we got supply and rich plan release and the publish faces included in the top uh, of the, the, the portal. Uh, this is where the typical in River PIM process takes place. Uh, but we also have some vertical apps in the middle. Planner is to plan market launches and market activities like campaigns and other uh, activities that we need to, to promote our products. Supplier onboarding is to onboard information from suppliers efficiently and content store is actually the other way around. It's to get your resellers and, and uh, your value chain to get all that valuable content available that you've produced within your enrichment phase so that they can be as efficient and sell as much products as you do in your own channels. Uh, to the right, we got notifications, which will tell us that, that we have tasks to do, but also uh, monitor things that we want to set up ourselves. So we can actually say that we want to monitor all cotton chinos that are not in assortment and are ready for enrichment so that we can get notified when, when the system deems it ready for us to start working with something. And we can have drop boxes, internal drop boxes in the work areas so we can share information easily without having to set up actually a drop box or sending emails or, or whatnot. And we got statistics seeing how much 
products are coming in? How many styles did we get from PLM? Uh, how how many of them are being enriched at the moment? How many have how many images have we produced for them, etc.? So we can actually really see the production and to see see the progress in the production. When we go into the enrichment phase, this is an example with a pair of chinos. Uh, we see the media assets that are the main images for, for this uh, style or product. We can see all the details, everything from the categorizations to, to descriptions and, and, of course, also uh, information about fabrics and stuff. You can see where it's used in the top right there, where we have a Walmart channel, we have an e-commerce channel and two publications uh, being either print or maybe a tablet app through Adobe Publishing Suite. And we can see where it's included. We can see that it's in a campaign called Cotton Chinos, uh, in some assortment called Pants, etc. Media assets are very much a part of, of uh, today's product information. And uh, if we look at the media panel, uh, we have a light board view of all the media assets connected to this product or style. Um, and of course, all the media assets related to all the uh, different variants that are included in this product as well. So we can easily drag and drop new ones here, or we can rearrange, we can download them in many different formats, etc. So digital asset management is very much a part of InRiver. It's built into the core of the system, so you don't need a separate digital asset management system at all. Uh, the best thing here is that all the digital assets can be found using the data or the metadata of the respective products or styles it's connected to. So you can easily find images of blue sweaters sold in France uh, that are 100% cotton. Of course, we can do previews. We can see a lot of information about the files. We can see where it's included at the moment, where it's being published at the moment. And of course, we can see all the other related images that, that, that goes uh, with products or variants that this image is also included in. We can create work areas where we can get a very visual view of, of uh, and, and select uh, products, variants, styles, images uh, to group, uh, to, to create assortments for different campaigns, marketing activities, or, or just to, to actually have a very visual way of planning our assortment. We can go into the plan and release phase and see a structure, in this case, the Walmart channel being published. Uh, and I've chosen here to, to highlight the knitwear assortment. And in that node, we'll find the, uh, all the knitwear that's been published to, to the Walmart channel at this time. So we can easily drag and drop uh, whole structures, whole assortments here, or just down to, to product or SKU level. And we can configure it to actually automatically create searches that are being published to a channel. So we can say that publish all knitwear that's for women is blue uh, and in 100% cotton. So what you are seeing today is the, the Technia Power Optimizer, which is being built uh, on top of Inovia. So the, the screens which you are uh, seeing here is in the view from the apparel optimizer view. So the development style is uh, nothing but the variance which is being um, which is, uh, described by the Johan. So the, the, the integration which I'm showing today is basically uh, pushing the information from PLM, uh, from the Technia Power Optimizer using a Technia integration framework to the in-river. So in this use case, you can see a sweater, which is buy ready. This is available in three different uh, colorways. And uh, this is the vendor. So if I just uh, go here and promote this is to a production, that's what the, we have configured the trigger. So you can do this is from any way. So when you walk, press this one, and you can see that it is successfully promoted. So when you come over here, this is the, the in, in river decline. You can see the product is not there so yet. So when you care, you can see that uh, the information which is being pushed uh, is available in the in river. So you can see that the different colorways it is available. And so 
and it, it shows the marketing name, the product number, uh, the supplier, and the article group. Uh, it, this is the basic configuration uh, of the of the interval, but um, you can configure in any way you want to, and the proper mapping can be done. So it shows the different images, it's, it's different colorways, it's available, and also we use the rest of the web services to cap transfer the files, uh, the image files. Um, a little more on this one. Uh, so this is the same, but Johan was showing this is the the, the thin client, the in reverse thin client. So whatever information you are seeing here, um, it can also be uh, it can also be here also. So for example, the same thin client um, information is uh, also available in this view also as well. So <clears throat> that's I think. Yeah, some issue in the Yeah, you can see the information is available here too. Um, so coming back here, we are using a middle layer. This is basically the the, the Technia integration framework, um, which is used for uh, transferring the information uh, into the LQ. Uh, so this is the information. This is the Technia admin client you are seeing. So you can see that uh, last hour, how many transactions has been transferred. So this information is being uh, sent from from Inovia, uh, taking a power optimizer back to the um, uh, in river MQ series and then MQ will, will pull up. This is the way the information is being sent, uh, the XML information. <coughs> yeah, the integration is seems very simple and you can easily configurable and uh, easy to use. Um, if you have any questions, we can do another detailed WebEx or questions. I can show you all the Technical details, the component in integration, and the configuration. Thank you, Johan.